welcome back to another episode on Life Afloat. Just moved the boat, um, so I'm going to go and get the car. Me and Daisy can go and get the car in a moment. I'm just checking the parking because you can see the boat behind me. Um, haven't actually moored up here before. Uh, it's a spot that I found on the map. So. Um, it looks like there's parking here at this bridge. I'm just gonna have a little walk up before we go and get the car. Uh, and just double check that. And then if there is, I'll go back, we'll get Daisy. And uh, yeah, we'll go and wander back, get the car, bring you with us. But it's a nice spot here. I mean, you just heard a train go past, I'm sure. It's impossible to avoid uh, the train line really along this stretch of the Grand Union. It runs pretty much parallel with it from Milton Keynes to Northampton. Um, but it's a really nice spot. I don't know if you can see cause the sunlight, but there's horses in the field there. Uh, there's a farm there. It's fairly peaceful. We've got one boat just the other side of that bridge. And then nothing until us. And then there's one boat just a little bit behind us. So nice and peaceful. I've had one boat go past since I got here, which is good. But uh, anyway, I'm going to have a little wander up to this bridge, suss out what the parking is like. Um, and I'll get back to you. Hello. Should we go for a walk? Go on then. I'm getting your lead. Here you are. No, we're not going in. Off you go. Now, if you've seen me and Daisy before on our walks along the uh, towpaths, you will know. She's got a thing for rather large sticks. So we'll see what she can find today as we walk back to the car. I'm sure she'll find something about 10 foot long to run around the towpath with. Like an absolute nutter. as we walk along I'll give you a bit of an update on things. Um, you remember quite a long time ago I mentioned I'd applied for a marina manager's position and I sort of assumed that they weren't interested as I hadn't heard anything back for well, quite, a while, quite a long time, maybe three months, something like that. Then all of a sudden they gave me a phone call and said can you come in for an interview? So I went in for this interview and that was probably, I don't know, four weeks ago, something like that. Well, um, I've heard back now from that. I got an email uh, and it said, thank you very much for your application. Um, sorry to say on this occasion, we won't be inviting you in for an interview. I thought, what? I've had an interview. I think there's a bit of a communication problem somewhere there. But there we go. I thought about replying saying, oh, thanks for email. Um, I did come in for an interview. So, not quite sure what you're talking about, but I didn't. I thought, no, I'll just, I won't respond. Um, I was obviously a busy time for them with COVID and they've probably got a lot going on so they just made a, a mistake but that's fine um, so anyway I haven't got that job which is fine because I want to carry on with the website so they're going quite well um, I've had an idea with that on how to sort of scale up the business quite considerably so just doing a bit of research into that at the moment um, yes so that's the update on the work front 
Oh, I had recorded uh, the cruise of moving the boat. I had my camera set up similar to how I did before in, in my last video when I did a cruise and a chat because that was received quite well so I wanted to do another video like that and I've just looked at the footage that I've recorded. It's terrible. I can't use it. Um, there's a horrendous buzzing noise on all of the audio. I think something was vibrating, making like a sort of like a buzzing effect on the microphone. I'm not, not quite sure what. Um, and the camera was, was just, just seemed very unsteady. It was on a like a tripod thing, but I'm not quite sure what happened there, so I need to figure out that. Um, maybe I need to get a proper tripod, like a, a good sturdy one that can absorb the um, vibrations, because all the vibrations are just completely magnified through the camera. Um, so completely unusable footage, unfortunately, from that. Um, I did have a camera on the front of the boat as well, which was just recording the, the journey. So I'll release a video, like a slow TV type thing for that. It's not everyone's cup of tea, absolutely, I appreciate. But I will do that if people want to watch uh, a little journey. Oh, I better put Daisy on the lead. There's some rabbits out here. How crazy is that? Uh, rabbit hatch there, and then there's a cage here with some rabbits in. So I don't want to scare them. Come here. Good girl. This way. There you go. She was looking, but uh, yeah, she didn't try to get to them or anything. That's not what you expect to see on the towpath pet rabbits, but uh, there we go, why not? Um, you should never hurt another animal at all. Um, I don't know if I've said the story about when we were in lockdown in Marsworth, there was a duck called Quacky. Oh, it was very echoey under this bridge. Um, there was a duck called Quacky, and it was a pet duck that people would bring down to the canal every day to release. And then they came down in the evening, they whistle and he went running over to them to be picked up and taken home again. Anyway, Quacky was very, very tame. Oh. Let's wait for this to go. There we are. So Quacky was a very tame duck. And me and Daisy were on a walk one day. And Quacky was sat in the uh, towpath. And I have to say, I didn't spot him sitting there. And she just went right over to him. Um, now, he didn't move, which I was surprised about. Um, but she just went, had a sniff, and then looked at me, really confused, as if to say, what's he still doing here? He should have been scared of me and gone in the water. And she was like, looking back at the duck, looking at me, looking at the duck, looking at me. Just didn't know what to do about it. And I called her back and she came over and no problem. Well, I imagine this building has a bit of history to it. It's got doors that open up onto the canal there. So I imagine back in the day it was uh, some sort of workshop or factory or something where goods were delivered to maybe by boat. It's now a farm building. Um, I had a little look through on the way past in the boat and there was sheep inside. So yeah, it'd be interesting to know what this was actually used for when the canals were full of working boats. Ah, so I bought a little gadget um, to help empty the water out of the bilge. Obviously I do have a bilge pump but it leaves about to, oh gosh here we go. Oh no, look at this. What are you doing? You can't leave that there. Why are you shaking it? What are you doing? 
Oh my gosh. Come on. Good job no one's coming, isn't it? Right, what was I saying? Oh yes, I've bought a gadget to help empty the water out of the bilge. Um, there's not much in there, it's a couple of inches, but it's, uh, oh gosh, I worry about my legs as she's running past, but it's um, not enough for the bilge pump to empty, the bilge pump always leaves a couple of inches because uh, you just can't move the last bit. Um, and a while ago I sort of dried out the edge of the bilge and I treated the rust and stuff, but I didn't degrease the bilge, so the rust treatment hasn't really worked that well, I don't think. So I want to do it properly. Uh, now I have mopped out the engine bilge and used nappies to soak up the the rest and what have you, but mopping it out is a bit of a hassle, a bit of a palaver. So what I've got is. I looked for pond vacuums and like wet and dry vacuum cleaners, that sort of thing that I could use to suck out the water. But they all require quite a lot of space to store them and they're expensive, I couldn't afford one. So I won't tell you what I've got instead. You'll have to wait and see when I do the video, but I'm hoping it'll work and it'll suck out the water. Um, it's quite a compact thing that sort of clips together. Um, I haven't even opened it yet, so I've no idea if it's going to work, as I'm hoping or not, but we'll see. So I'm going to do a video on that, get the engine bilge nice and dry, degrease it, and then just treat the rust. Um, and that'll do for now. I'll paint it if I get some paint as well, but if not, then it won't really bother me too much. The rust would have been treated and this aqua steel stuff converts the rust and primes the metal all at the same time so it won't go rusty again once that treatment is uh, been applied um, if you're interested in the aqua steel stuff that I use I'll stick a link in the description below you can go and take a look it's very very good stuff used on oil rigs out at sea apparently so if it's good enough for an oil rig it'll be good enough for my little boats engine build. So there you can see just how close the train track is at certain points along the canal here. If you like trains that's great. I don't like trains so it's not so great but it is what it is. You can't hear them that much where the boat is at the minute. A few have gone past and obviously you can hear them, but it's significantly further away uh, than it is here. So they're just fairly faint. And when you're in the boat, you can't hear them really. So it's no issue. Oh, Daisy's trying to trip me up and make me fall in the canal. A bit cheeky, isn't it? Hot. I shouldn't have worn my coat. I didn't think it'd be this warm walking along. I suppose I could undo it really. That would help. I've been looking for some uh, slows. So I want to pick some slows and make some slow gin. Just about be ready in time for Christmas. Just about. But I haven't found any on the walk yet. I passed some. I moved the boat yesterday. I moved today as well, so I'm not walking back from the car where we moored up yesterday. I'm walking back to get the car from where we moved to today because I've got the girls at the weekend, and where I was moored up in Budbrook. Um, 
was about an eight or nine minute walk to the car because um, I couldn't find like, all the all the spots closer were taken when we got there, so I had to carry on a bit. And my girls won't be happy with that, so I've moved the boat today for them so that uh, we haven't got as far to walk from the car to the boat. That's assuming, of course, I can actually get the car parked there when we <laughs> when we arrive back at the boat. This is ambitious. Are you gonna get it? going to bite bits off of it. Come on then. Let's go. This way. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> Come on, we're going. I think that <laughs> I think that's a bit much for her. She's talking to this branch at the moment. He's moving it. Oh my. <laughs> Come on. We're going. I won't leave it there. It won't, it won't be left in the way, don't worry. Yeah. She's determined to bring it with her, look. I can hear it moving. Are you giving up? Have you given up? She's given up with that stick now. I think that was a bit ambitious. It wasn't really a stick, was it? It was quite a big branch, to be fair. She's mad. So we've made it to the bridge where the car is nearby. So we'll leave it there for that video. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, please take care of yourselves. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button as well. That would be much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.